with how things were policed on Saturday in London. Now, two young lads turned up with a cross of St George. No doubt there was a slight sense of impishness in what they were doing, but let's just have a look at what happened. For the moment, anything racist or in close to racism is said. The moment anything gets anything close to that, right? People are going to start getting racist. It's just this is the verbal warning, so you know we're on the same page. That's all it is. No, I'm sorry. But because two young lads turn up with a cross of St George, why on earth does that young cop assume they're going to say something racist when there were plenty of things being said amongst some of the other 100,000 that were clearly openly and overtly racist? And much as I accepted in the first part of this programme that the police have a devil of a job, and yes, they have to act within the law, but they also have to exercise discretion. And I have to say, that particular clip makes me blooming angry. Well, let's see what Graham Wesson, former Met police officer and author of How to Be a Police Officer, well, Graham, welcome to the show, <laughs> as author of How to Be a Police Officer. I mean, there's something wrong there. Not for me, and I know we're probably going to disagree on this. For me, and I think you, you have to take that, that's a clip. So I'm not sure what led up to it and what was said afterwards. They got, they got the, um, they got the flag, St George's flag. And what's wrong with that? Nothing at all. But I think Thank if goodness. you look at where they are and, and who they've got around them, who may not actually accept people with an English flag being amongst their protests. Oh, I see. How dare you be English in London? You no, know? no, no. It's not that at all. It's just that it's almost like, fellas, you just need to be careful today of where you are and what you're doing, and almost like just, just putting them on, on notice that there might be people that take exception to them. So it's almost for their own safety and well-being. There's no problem with them being there, and again, you can have, if you want it, not even a counter-protest, but you have like a different people with different flags there, but it's almost just saying to them, just be careful, what, oh, don't get embroiled in, in like, engagement right. or getting so too excited. we could say then that the police thought that the fact they were there might be a provocation. No, not a provocation, but just only for, only for own safety. So you're here with your flag, you're clearly, you're English, you're supporting England, that's great, you can do this, but just yeah. be mindful of that. There might be some here yeah. which that is fine. don't like you. So just fine. be careful of yourselves and look after yourselves. So be that's... careful what you're saying. Well, and I think it was just a word of warning. I, I, I'd, be, I'd be surprised if they didn't actually almost like, not warn them, but just say to them, fella, just be careful how you behave today. That's it. Just be, just be respectful and, and peaceful and go no, about your business. And don't say anything racist because you're white and with that flag, so therefore we think well, we probably didn't, will. He didn't say that, did he? He just said, just be careful of any racist comments. Mm, yeah, OK. Now, now, more seriously, there was a pro-Israel march protest mm. planned for Gold as Green, which has been known for a very, very long time mm. as, I think, probably the most Jewish, certainly these days, the most mm. Jewish part of London. They were expecting about 30,000 people uh, to join this march. And in the end, police pressure led to the organisers saying, we've just got to cancel it. And, uh, you know, uh, it, was, it was a pray for Israel. It was, in fact, the Christian action that were actually behind yeah. the whole thing. Um, and you can't help feeling... Graham, you know, as I said at the start of this show, it's almost as if radical Islam will just sort of back off and say it's all a bit too tricky. Mm. But if you're a much smaller number of people, well, we're going to be tough on you. And I, you know, I'm guessing here, mm. and there was in fact the next day in Trafalgar Square, last night in Trafalgar Square, there was a last minute impromptu gathering. Yeah, much Which was well. very much about freeing the hostages, yeah. which I think passed off very peacefully. Yeah, from what I've seen as well. You know, thank goodness. Uh, but if I lived in Golders Green, mm. and I was now living in a street that had taken out private security, mm. because you can't expect the police to walk up and down the road every day, uh, there's private security when the kids go to school, um, and this is where I've been forced in my life, and yet when I want to have a peaceful march in my own district, I'm, I'm effectively pressurised the police not to do it. Something seems very wrong there. Well, I don't know the circumstances of why or what the pressure was, whether it was to do with either the safety of the crowds on the roads or whatever. The police don't normally stop processions. They normally work with organisers to try and facilitate any form of protest or procession. So without knowing the facts of, of why that was called off, there could be any number of reasons why they felt it wasn't right to go ahead with it on whatever day it was. In your view, mm. you know, it was interesting seeing some Mark Rowley earlier on. Mm. 
and he was really saying to the Home Secretary, because I mean she's been having a go at him in a sense, he was really saying to her and the government, give us a clearer set of rules. Do you think it's possible to have clearer sets of rules to do with what we're discussing here, this subject, or in the end, does it just have to, does it just come down to police discretion? The law's quite restrictive when you look at, and he was mentioning the Public Order Act, Terrorism Act, yep. and the Public Order Act's basically got three, three threads running through it. Threatening, abusive, insulting, even when it comes down to inciting racial hatred. The act they do must have one of those three things in it. So they also had the uh, Crown Prosecution Service lawyers, the specialist crime advisors there, who were looking at all those clips. From what they see on the clips, they couldn't see any offences taking place. That doesn't mean to say nothing will happen. It just means at the time, from what they can see and what they're being told, they don't think it's reached the threshold of a criminal offence. That doesn't mean it doesn't get investigated. They may have got a puppet order crime team who have been working on, you mentioned last Saturday's event. Yes. As well. Last Saturday's event and this Saturday's event. They'll be going through clips and looking at all the context of what was said, where it was said, getting the officers to make statements on what they actually heard to try and build a bigger picture you've then got you then got more evidence of possible offenses and you had maybe at five o'clock on a saturday evening when you're looking at it on the screen mm. so you know great phrase justice delay isn't justice denied it may well be that, that somebody's well, well, that, that, that may be graham Wetton, thank you thank you for coming on and joining us folks i've tried to be as reasonable as i can